This NFL Week Three recap edition of the Sports Gambling Podcast is presented by WinBet. WinBet is now live in Colorado, Indiana, Michigan, New Jersey, Tennessee, Virginia, and Arizona. From boosted parlays to in-game odds on every major sport, WinBet has what you need to win. Sign up today to receive a one thousand dollars risk-free sports bet. Download the WinBet app now or visit wynnbet.com and start winning today. We're also brought to you by PropSwap. America's number one app to buy and sell sports bets. Use promo code SGP on your first deposit. Receive up to five hundred dollars in bonus cash. That's PropSwap.com promo code SGP. We're also brought to you by Pixwise. Pixwise is the number one app for free sports betting, picks, props, and parlays. Download the free Pixwise app now to make your next bet better. We're also brought to you by Odds Crowd. Are you the best football better in the U.S.? Odds Crowd challenges you to prove it. With their free to play fantasy betting contest, Odds Crowd gives away hundreds of dollars in weekly contests, including the $100 SGPN exclusive free roll contest. And of course, don't forget to download the SGPN app, your home for all of our free picks and podcasts. Ooh, welcome everyone to the sports gambling podcast. I'm Sean, stacking the money green with my partner in picks, Ryan. Real money, Kramer. What's happening, Kramer? Dog. Just plugging into the matrix, hitting too many buttons, uh, thinking about week three. Didn't go fourteen and two, Sean. <laughs> Not yet, at least. You felt like you were going fourteen and two. I was feeling dangerous. I uh, I I picked like shit once again. Kramer, though, congrats to you. You hit your lock, got us off the schneid. Hit your tees. That was huge. Thank you. I I whiffed on my lock. I whiffed on my tees and my dog. It was a. Uh, Again, rough night or rough Horrible. week with the picks. I should have made Green Bay my lock at plus three and a half. I felt really good about it. My lock selection's been off. I've been, you know, relying on some old, old crafty veterans like Rus- Russell Wilson, like Patrick <laughs> Mahomes, awful loss. None of these things are uh, coming through. So rough week with the picks. We'll get to that, and we will hit you with what we've really been killing it at is our Monday night. Football prop bets, Thursday night football prop bets. Uh, you know, Sunday night we've been getting down on. We've done a really good job on these prop bets, Kramer. So shout out to us, killing it in the prop market, making up for some uh, red ink bleeding all over the place uh, in the NFL. This is, I think, my best year picking college games, and um, uh, oppositely the my worst picking NFL games on college. I hit my lock. I hit my dog. I hit my bonus lock. It was, it was fucking awesome. And then I win all that money and then just give it all back on Sunday. And we got to watch the game tape. And I heard you say his name, but Russ Wilson, I he's on the list. We uh, Do we have to kick him out of the house? Are we not? We're not getting that. <laughs> we're definitely not. We shouldn't be going after that pussy this week because he ain't cooking. No, he's he, not. You know, he ain't cooking to the tune of losing to Kirk Cousins. <laughs> I mean, it was. What are we doing, Sean? It was. You like that? You like that? No, it, I didn't like that, Kurt. And uh, if you guys got some bad beats, shit you want to gripe about, yeah. feel free. Hit us up on the uh, Twitter Spaces hotline at Gambling Podcast. Chime in or hit us up in the YouTube chat. And uh, we got, already got one guy complaining he got burned by the Jags plus eight. I mean, when the Jags had that 109 yard kickoff, kick six return off the 66 yard. Why the hell were they trying that field goal? How did they? You know? go okay. They're they're up six at half and they're catching eight and a half. How are they going to no. fuck this up? And then Trevor Lawrence comes in, he fucks it up, and uh, you know that that's where things start to unravel in the early games. We got to do our rookie report card. That's been a fun segment, but before we do that, let's get, let's get to the big dogs themselves. Win bet. That's right. Hopefully, uh, you had it. Head it over to winbet.com or download that win betting app and got down on the wins. Triple the spread opportunity. That's right. You didn't, you know, I mean, they gave you Green Bay at plus 10 and a half, plus 100. I mean, you could have enjoyed Sunday night football without a sweat at all. Although I know our DJ's only audience, they, they preferred the sweat. They embraced the sweat. They got so much live action, so much in-game opportunities over at winbet.com. Make sure you head over there, download the app as well, and uh, get in on that thousand dollar risk-free sports bet. LFG over at winbet.com. God, oh wow, I'm just 
I'm just on fire right now. Just, just how so? Just Woo, it's smoking my weed. Just juggling shit. Sorry, I, I'm I'm feeling Kramer's putting the shades on. I'm feeling a little. I, I you know woke up feeling dangerous. I, I feel uh I feel like a lot of things happened today. Uh, where I'm, <laughs> I didn't go 14 and two. No. I saw the 14 and two. I didn't go 14 and two. We were searching. Uh, you and your witchcraft. We were searching for yes. what. What is wrong? You you threatened to turn off God's eye because I, well, it was, I quote, was going to... the only thing that was new. I was <laughs> I was thinking of tearing down God's eye. You which... wanted to put it in the corner, <laughs> like it had just fucking thrown a tantrum at the restaurant. Oh, well, you know, someone has to pay. I'm still deciding. Well, you know, maybe it's uh maybe it's a house plant. Maybe it's a plastic deck chair. The problem is, Ryan. Here's the thing. When you are a business owner, and we have a nice office uh, dream setup studio wise, when I look to go grab something to break, no. I don't have anything that I want to break because it's all our shit, and I don't want to break it. And what do I do? Break one of the nice bottles of liquor that the audience was kind enough to set in. I don't want to no, do that. No. Our nice glasses that uh, you no, know. No, we shouldn't do that. Yeah, I mean, what am I? What am I going to break? I want to break something. We have a sweet money tree, which is it's doing its, it's job beautiful. in the office. That I think we got to move it into the studio, Ryan. That is my plan: is to bring, uh, and and maybe we should maybe we should actually just do that now, Ryan. I I think we have to do that. You keep the audience motivated. I'm going to bring in the money tree. I'm going to set it up right here. It'll look good, and it'll help. Uh, it'll help us out as we as we cleanse the end of week three. What's going to be hilarious is as soon as Sean gets out there and realizes how heavy this thing is, th this is going to be a disaster and we're doing it live. Uh, look, what I was starting with was what really needs to change is we need to start by taking a break from Russ Wilson. We've been in, in on this guy for too long. Holy shit. Oh, don't damage the tree, bro. Watch the camera. Oh my God. This is a fucking disaster. This guy bringing the tree in. <laughs> it was pretty heavy, right? It's uh, a little heavier than you expected. Bad boy. You know, I'm kind of digging. It's it's giving me a little bit island vibes, maybe. Yeah. If we slide it forward, it might actually not block the logo. I think this is this is a sick ass money tree. This is what we need. All right. <laughs> what do we think? Make sure you go to YouTube and check it out because it looks <laughs> okay. We All got right, the sorry. problem if, has been oh. solved. We got our money tree. Let's fucking go. Sean, mind closing the studio door and then we can start the podcast for people listening. Uh, imagine listening to a podcast and they got and, and all of a sudden it turns into your wife rearranging the living room. Sean's bringing the plant into. The, here's my concern: is that my my every day where the plant is normally out sitting next to me, this might be weird. No, we don't. We'll we'll keep it in here. We'll decide how long. It'll be interesting if we, <laughs> I mean, if we keep it up for the the college show, it may block Colby's sight line. <laughs> oh, let's see what it looks like when we go to the the ISO show. Oh, oh that's pretty yeah, good. That's, that's pretty that's badass. Pretty good. Uh, you're not even. You know, you. Have I got no, a couple leaves. You got there. no money tree exposure. All right. So check it. You got You got to see it visually. <laughs> it's over creating here. a little shade. <laughs> YouTube.com/slash <laughs> Sports Gambling Podcast. All right. If you need your own uh, money tree, you know, I mean, right, there, some people are calling PropSwap.com, Kramer, the ultimate money tree, giving you out uh, opportunities to buy and sell real sports betting tickets using that promo code SGP up to a five hundred dollar bonus. Um, maybe, uh, maybe some of these futures. I mean, we're we have some really nice futures, like my Tua under passing yards. Whoo! I could get a good price for that over at PropSwap.com. Nick Sirianni, coach of the year. That one's looking pretty good. I mean, Colby, the one we gave him, the uh, Matt Corral, the one, he trophy, earned, the one he earned. Yeah, we gave it to him as a uh, bonus for his work on the uh, he earned, college football experience. All right. Uh, and again, go to propswap.com, buy and sell real sports betting tickets. We got uh, Steven uh, Vasquez wants to know let's talk about how bad the Steelers are. You know what? Yeah, let's jump ahead. We can we can do the Pittsburgh Bengals game right now. The I mean, my handicap and neither of us wanted to really touch this game. My handicap was yeah, I I don't really want to bet on either one of these teams. 
Pittsburgh is at home. They do have Mike Tomlin. They have home field advantage. That should be enough. But then that, Big Ben yeah. comes in, and and the Bengals won twenty four ten. Steelers Horrible. were three point favorites. It went down to two and a half, which made me start to think about maybe taking the Steelers there. I, we picked the Steelers. I picked the Steelers, thinking again, like all things being equal, take Tomlin. I mean, Joe Burrow was dealing with some issues. They lost T. Higgins. The defense I thought played okay, kept him in the game, but god damn, Big Ben's arm is horrific. Now I didn't think it was good coming into the year, but I thought it was going to be serviceable. But that you know that cliff he fell off at the end of last year, he has just not come back at all, and and he's looked horrific. Uh, my I wrote down the note. Ben, like see, he looks like someone whose center of gravity. Uh, has got like has moved up like two feet in his torso. <laughs> Everything is like he's falling over. Everything looks horrible. He can't move anymore. He can't throw anymore. I'm th- y- their backup strategy of just signing guys who suck to not offend Big Ben. <laughs> they don't make the monster angry. Well, I, and again, uh, maybe he's not amazing, but I can't help but thinking. Give Gardner Minshew to the city of Pittsburgh. Couldn't you imagine Gardner Minshew with that mullet in Western mm-hmm. Pennsylvania, C- the, like the jean shorts, the whole, the, the whole handlebar, the whole Gardner Minshew vibe. Uh, he would be much better than Big Ben right now. And Mason Rudolph, uh, I mean, how bad is Mason Rudolph that he can't, they can't sit Ben down? And why can't you sit him down and be like, all right, he's clearly, hey, we'll just say you're injured. I mean, he, maybe it's the injury. But whatever, he he's looked horrible this entire season. Yeah, I've always thought Mar- Gardner Minshew's uh, facial hair was a perfect match for the Pittsburgh muff. You know, yes, just just that handlebar wraps beautifully. Or yeah, I, there he's done. It, Big Ben's done. He's Big Ben cooked. is cooked. And, and honestly, it, it's hard to imagine the Steelers even sniffing the playoffs at this point because I I think whoever they bring in is going to be trash too. Now, uh, this was at home. Yeah. Usually, imagine, a- <laughs> yeah, Big Ben's much better at home than he is on the road. Imagine ooh, ooh, ooh. when the Steelers go on the road, it, it, it's going to be a complete disaster. Carolina Panthers 24, Houston Texans 9. Uh, we were on the Texans catching eight as the home dog. Man, uh, again, super ugly Thursday, Thursday night, and you know, NFC South, AFC South battle that no one really cared about uh, game wise. We did hit Sam Darnold first touchdown. That was a highlight of the week and end of oh, Thursday good. night football. But pretty ugly game. I mean, I, I'll I'll say this. I don't I didn't think Davis Mills looked horrible, right? Like I, he wasn't I, I mean, he wasn't the only reason they lost. No. And, and they clearly need Tyrod back if they're gonna remain frisky as a dog this big. Sam Darnold to me still doesn't look great. We'll see what happens. Again, I, you saw the clip. If you've listened to the show, I predicted Christian McCaffrey would get hurt. He did get hurt. I said it like 9 million times. Luckily in our high stakes league where you overruled me drafting Christian McCaffrey, number one, overall, I did convince you that we should draft Chuba Hubbard. I'm kind of half laughing and half choking right now. Yes. You made me laugh while as I was drinking. So keep talking for a second. <laughs> <laughs> I'm like, <laughs> Ryan's losing it over here. Well, I just remember, I remember that 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 moment where we, where you go, yeah, we should probably take McCaffrey, and I go, you know what? I'm 100 percent getting blamed for this when McCaffrey yes. gets hurt. Yes. All right. Yeah. Oh, come on, Ryan. I got to throw someone under the bus. Arizona. Any thoughts on Carolina Houston? I mean, look, uh, another team where like, look, look what the quarterback. He looked pretty good when they were running that hurry up. I think he had moments where he looked all right. His neck is pretty awesome. Uh, that was a pretty <laughs> awesome discovery. It's a great I mean, takeaway. Kind of, yeah. I mean, he he looks like one of those Formula One drivers. He just you don't grow him like that. We gotta worry though. He's gonna take a hit. Like that's that's w- too much exposure. Well, need, and, need and, some drapes or something. And uh, Brandon, helmet Brandon Cooks has been fun. I know we gave out his over receiving yards, so but he, he's quietly been having a really good season. So I'm gonna keep looking to play him in player props and. Again, they they're just so limited. Nico Collins is out. It just they're, shows you how good he is as a receiver. Yeah. He and, just and must be a huge dick. This Carolina team, three and oh. So my you know, I gave them out to have a winning record and to make the playoffs. I think that was like plus two hundred, plus three hundred preseason. That is looking pretty good. 
again, they've had a very soft schedule, but still three and O is three and O now you you have an extra half week of rest there as well. And again, Darnold hasn't looked amazing, but the defense has looked much better and the offenses look good enough. Yeah. I mean, this, I mean, it's a fun team. I mean, I, that's the takeaway. Carolina is going to be they're They're a playoff team right now. They're, you want to take a call Sean? Sure. We got uh we got Jack calling in over on the Twitter spaces. Let's see if we can do this. Maybe it's Sorry. the Jack from Twitter. It, it maybe it's Jack from Twitter. What's up, Jack? What's up, man? How are you guys doing? Great. Cool. Thanks for calling into the show. Hey, no problem, man. Hey, uh, I was just gonna touch in a little bit with you guys. Uh, you guys were talking about the Cincinnati game a little bit. Uh, Cincinnati and the Steelers. Um, you know, I was handicapping that game a lot. Uh, I didn't end up playing that game, but um, a lot of the sharp money was always on. Uh, there were it was always on the Bengals for that game. But I think it was a thirty percent on the tickets and seventy percent money uh, for basically the whole week on that game and uh, ended up, uh, ended up Bengals were ended up beating them. All right. Yeah, no. And, and I, I mean, I guess I was just hesitant again because of how big Ben owns the uh, owns the state of Ohio owns the Bengals. Bengals beat right. the Steelers by more than 10 points for the first time since 1995. So the ownership of uh, the Steelers over the Bengals, but again, maybe we're seeing a new era here no, I mean, hit- with uh, Joe Burrow and certainly certainly where big Ben is and how bad he's been. History can only kick you in the nuts once. And now we know, <laughs> now we know Ben's cooked and now, now we can get on the sharp Jack, side. I what guess. was your, uh, what was your favorite win of the day? Uh, well, I had Rams, I had Rams first half, I had Rams money line and uh, had the Rams pick them. Like basically Whoa. I hit the Rams. I had the Rams all the way around. Uh, and then Got the I wheel on the Rams. On, uh, I had San Francisco win that game tonight. Uh, ended up losing that game money line. Uh, I actually had Rams and Rams and Niners in, in a parlay, a plus two ten parlay. Ooh, uh, yeah, ended up losing at the very end of that one. Da- uh, yeah, that was a that was a tough one. I mean, that was a that was an exciting Sunday night game. All right, uh, Jack. Before we uh, let you go, what do you got? Any uh, any action for tomorrow night? Yeah, actually, tomorrow. You know, I was looking. At, I've been looking at the line. I'm actually going to do an article tomorrow. Uh, you know, on PickCity dot com, uh, where uh, where I'm at. And I, I actually like tomorrow. Um, a lot of the money's a ton, tons of money are on Dallas tomorrow. So Dallas is always a, a big public team. So everybody wants to bet on Dallas, um, regardless because Dallas fans and, and all that. They always want to bet on Dallas. So, but actually tomorrow on that game, I'm um, looking at the lines right now. Ninety-five uh, percent of the money line money tomorrow right now is on Dallas. Which uh, which is a big red flag, like if you're a sports handicapper, if you're you're yep. looking at lines and stuff like that. So that's, that's a huge red flag. They're they're minus three and a half as well. So, <laughs> so load up on the Eagles is what you're saying, right? Yeah. I, all right. We we lost we lost Jack. All right. Thanks uh, for calling in, Jack. But I I think what he was trying to get on our good side, and he was taking a long road around, sneaking a little plug there, and say fuck the cowboy. So <laughs> because he did that. We'll we'll let that we'll let that happen on the podcast. Show. Jags nineteen, Arizona thirty one. Jags catching seven and a half. Like we said, when they when they had that kick six return, it felt like they were going to cover. Of course, Trevor Lawrence ugly ugly pick six. That was kind of the difference as far as the spread. Never felt like Arizona was going to lose the game, but they were sleepwalking enough that the Jags should have been a live dog. And uh, I mean, Urban Meyer. Does he make it to the end of the season? That's the only question I have. Urban Meyer doesn't lose the Cliff Kitchens in college football. Bottom line, the USC no. job is open. Uh, somehow, uh, this was a, a perfect Cliff Kitchens game, and they still like backdoor covered as a favorite. It, uh, it's weird. And in Arizona, they've had. I mean, this is kind of an ugly win. I mean, not to nitpick a twelve point road win, but no. they didn't look amazing against the Jags. They got very fortunate with that Minnesota miss field goal, and then they looked awesome beating up on the Titans week one. Uh-oh. I I still don't really know what to make of this Arizona team, but the fact that they're three and L, they're definitely exceeding expectations as far as like where I thought they would be, especially this early in the season. I mean, uh, what's your take on the on the on Arizona overall? Three and L, are you are you buying or selling? It's one of my my takeaways uh, watching the game tape. I think I have to shed some of my preseason bias. I think I'm just I'm still uh, weighing some things I thought in the preseason maybe too heavily. 
I think with Arizona though, specifically, this is just the high variance cliff Kingsbury Kyler experience. And I, sure they, they covered this game, but if you watch this game, kind of, kind of feel, feel a little robbed as a Jags ticket holder at the end of the day, Trevor yeah. Lawrence, just too much, well, too much and then, for a uh, seven. And then I'm looking at myself, I'm going over the game tape. I heard myself say Jags yeah. are stuck in auto fade. Yeah. But hey, this is the this is when sharps like us we take advantage. Uh, uh, blah blah blah. If there's one game, Arizona non-conference row. I just fucking I'm not picking the Jags again. Sean, well that's my other note. What we got to get back to it, and part of that is I I you know what I've been like looking up stats. What's and our reading core, Sean? I I don't need this. <laughs> I don't need this bullshit. I I'm letting my brain involve. Yes. It's a gut sport. It's a gut activity. <laughs> I'm a gut handicapper. And I'm letting my fucking useless brain get involved in this uh, process. I will say, I do think that we we have been too quick to not uh, continue on the auto fading. And I think perhaps with the uh, this week's upcoming NFL pick show, we'll just get back to it because there are some teams that have no business coming near a card, including maybe. Well, and, and 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 this team was stuck in auto fade till uh, again. I mean, they made it sound like Carson Wentz wasn't going to walk again. <laughs> he had two sprained ankles. Great. We're getting Jacob Eason. He's going to get a lot of points. He's not afraid to throw the goddamn ball. I, uh, Tennessee won and covered 25 16. Colts should have, should have at least backdoor that they're getting five, five and a half, six. When Carson Wentz came out, that was the most, I mean, that's the biggest indictment in the Carson Wentz. Like, there was a big chance he wasn't going to play, and the line didn't even move. <laughs> it, it just shows you no one believes in Carson Wentz. And as an Eagles fan, it's it's an awesome situation because Carson Wentz has played ninety eight percent of the snaps. He needs to play seventy five percent for us to get their first round pick, and he's looked horrible. I mean, right now between the Colts pick and the Dolphins pick, the Eagles have two of the top six picks overall uh, next year going into the draft. Getting ahead of myself, but you slightly Carson Wentz looks fucking horrific. He looks really bad. I and it's almost my buddy Justin from the Die Hard Eagles podcast, Kramer. He texted me and he goes, "I I have PTSD watching Carson Wentz because it's the same stuff I watched all last season where he just holds on to the ball, holds on to the ball, and then he like throws it and he like whips it at a receiver in a crossing route, and then it tips off, the, and then he's his his negative injury aura. It just like everyone he bumps into also gets injured. Quentin Nelson was banged up." It's just it's just a, a nightmare, and, and I mean, just kind of stepping out outside of the off the field, maybe Carson Wentz not able to find the back door when Andrew Luck never had a problem finding the back door. Perhaps says something about uh, off off field stylings. Carson Wentz, more of a conservative man, <laughs> not not looking to do that kind of thing. I, I mean, and, and he just know, sucks. And, and, and he Indy's sucks. Indy created turnovers. Well, fuck, like, you gave up at the first round pick. Well, what were you thinking? It, it is that trade is going to go down, uh, it really poorly, and they've de- they've kind of derailed worse their entire than franchise. Brad, worse than the Sam Bradford trade. I'll yeah. say it. Oh, and uh, Bruin dude two twelve, who sounds like a. It's a baby fucking wheel, man. Got a, got a little Boston on him. He says I'm on auto fade with any rookie quarterback playing a legit uh, or decent defense. These rookies can't deal with good defenses this early in the season, and we've been doing a segment, Ryan, where we kind of grade the rookies and their Let's report card. Uh, probably worth talking about again. Probably should have sold my Mac Jones rookie of the year on prop swap when it went all the way down. But he's still, I I think he's probably still in the mix there, pricing wise. Trevor Lawrence hasn't looked good. I got my rankings in front of you. Zach of Wilson's me. looked really bad. Zach Wilson and Trevor Lawrence tied for leading the league in seven picks. I mean, you could make Trey, Trey Lance uh, has has caught, maybe looked the best out of all of number. Them. No, I, well, I mean Justin Fields, and we'll get to that a uh, game. He looked, uh, he looked the worst. I mean, he looked. I don't know if you say, could it someone look worse than Zach Wilson? Number I think six. He did. I'm including now Davis Mills into this conversation. Okay. Number six, Justin Fields. Uh, wow. 
we were, were we watched the games with a Bears fan uh, today. Just <laughs> just no no uh, nothing uh, deliberate, nothing um, no pace. It was horrible to and, his and, drop back, and, and it starts there. And then you clearly see they're babying him. It's one read and, and go. And, and Davis Mills, you're right. Davis Mills looked better. I expected when Jalen Hurts came in last year. The Eagles played the Saints at home. He was a rookie quarterback. Who you know the the knock on him the reason he's a second round pick accuracy issues okay what do you do you roll him out boot yeah. action designed right. runs they they got him on the move the entire game and I I assumed Nagy would have a similar game can, plan can like take, Doug Peterson had to to set him up to succeed and there was just no the play calling wasn't there I know they have their offensive line issues but my God it was just a uh, you know as, a, as someone who's who's not like defended Nagy but I I I. I, I didn't think it was as bad as some thought, but man, he looks fucking horrible. Just quick notes from this. Uh, yeah. He just, let me take a quick victory lap pre quarter pole victory lap, but mm. he didn't look like he uh, did well on the whiteboard. No, he didn't look like he was able to see the field at all. And he looked like he was thinking way too much. And he certainly didn't look, look like a guy who could process so well that he should have come out and said in the preseason that the game is slow, which tells me that his brain might be slow. <laughs> number six, number five, Zach Wilson, uh, just too much flick of the wrist bullshit that might've worked at BYU. This is the it, national fucking football league. It looks horrible. The picks look hard. You mentioned that he's tied with Trevor Lawrence. And right now to me, Zach Wilson looks worse because those ball, just the floaters. I'll say this about Wilson. And I agree with your list so far. I, I think with Zach Wilson, uh, the one positive and it's almost all negative. The one positive is he's got some zip on the ball. And when he's making the right read, those throws are good. The problem is almost every read he seems to be making is completely wrong. Uh, next, I'm going to go Trevor Lawrence. And I, I think I'm starting to shift some of the blame that he probably didn't have the best coaching to prep him up for the mm. year. Because I, I think I, you see things from him where it's like, ah, okay, kind of like Zach Wilson. He's, he kind of started really horrible. He's gotten better ever since uh, going to number three. That's where I put uh, Mac Jones. Mm. The, I, he really, really horrible look. Uh, really I, bad game today. Uh, really bad look at home, uh, and now you have the Tom Brady game. Like, no. were you were you that nervous it's about it? Were you not sleeping wheel, because the boogeyman is coming home? <laughs> uh, number two, Davis Mills. Uh, maybe I'm being silly. But that team is trash. Small sample size, but again, he looked. Uh, that roster is not good. Tyrod made sense because he was going to be able to scramble, yeah. and so. You know, David Carr, his career ended when it started with the Texans. Davis Mills at least looked like he could make a throw or two. He had an NFL arm and he his throws looked deliberate. I we, think Zach Wilson we, they, they they fucking throw we, it. We around. haven't seen enough out of Davis Mills to probably yeah. completely shine a light on how much he probably sucks. But again, in a limited sample size, it was a primetime game. Yeah. Uh, I, by a mile now, Kyle Shanahan, smartest guy in the world, because Trey Lance, number one <laughs> atop my rookie quarterback board. He hasn't he hasn't been out there to to mess it up. No, he's just playing tight end and scrambling <laughs> into the end zone. I, I, I mean, yeah, I guess we haven't seen we haven't seen him throw. That's kind of by default. Uh, that's yeah. how bad this quarterback class is. If you redraft today, are they all drafted in the first round? <laughs> I uh, yeah, I mean, it's again, we're three games in. Uh, Browns twenty six, Bears six. They <laughs> covered the number. Kramer, you were on the Browns. We kind of hit on that game. I mean, the 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 Bears defense I thought played really well, kept him in the game, got some turnovers, uh, but I mean, just nothing on ops offense. Just complete felt nothing. Like, felt like the difference in this game. This was an insane stat. Was the defensive line for the Browns and Kareem Hunt? What's the stat? Yeah. And again, I, I gave out Kareem Hunt on the Millie Maker, uh, you know, giving out the DFS lineups. He had a massive game. Bears had one net passing yard. Do you know how hard that is to do in the NFL, Ryan? Well, I mean, if you're going to toot the Howie Roseman horn, Dave Gettleman does have the Bears' first round pick this year. Yes. <laughs> they, are, they don't look like they're <laughs> going to be very good. Well, I mean, yeah. Oh, I should say the Giants. Dave Gettleman. Actually, can you hit the breaking news? Yes. I assume for those watching the news might not have broke yet. My source uh, told me to wait until uh, 
uh, Monday, uh, September 27th, uh, Eastern time. But Dave Gettleman will be relieved of his duties. Uh, wow. You will wake up to the news that Dave Gettleman has been relieved of his duties. No. And uh, they let the problem is the the soon, these, these Mara kids love Dave Gettleman. You know this is funny. New York Giants head coach Joe Judge likely safe GM uh, gave D- Dave Gettleman. He's on the hot seat. Things could get awkward. I. <laughs> I don't, I just don't see Play it. the X-Files music. They don't they don't get rid of these guys. I told you this was part of the plan. The offense <laughs> dog shit. The GM's already on the hot seat. Fire the offensive coordinator. Fire the GM. Cleanse the franchise. Cleanse the franchise. All right, well Ryan, it seems like you want to talk about no, your Giants. Giants 14 Atlanta 17. I knew if I went with you and took the giants as favorites <laughs> that it would, I would put my, my negative mojo, my gambling stink on the Falcons. Mm. Uh, now all, we see why you're doing poorly on the, uh, on the giants by picking them. You, so I, I took one for the team. I mean, this is, if you're, if you're going to lose to the Falcons at home, uh, I mean, Kramer, where, wh- where are we going here? Two I want to. I want to bust your balls, but it's at some point it's if, just. If you're again, if you're picking the Giants, uh, just to affect the Giants, yeah, you need to look in the mirror. You have a responsibility. <laughs> Get your shit. No, together. you you get your shit together. You brainwashed me into thinking secondly, they would show up in sec- this spot and that the Falcons were that bad. Secondly, I told you, and, and everyone uh, can hear this too for the first time. Twenty four hour cooling off period. <laughs> So uh, I will. Uh, I'll have a prepared statement at some point this week. You can wait for it. Subscribe to the podcast. Uh, yeah, not much to say. But I mean, are we still just blaming everything on Jason Garrett, or what's the? Uh... I mean, you got to be aggressive. So it's coaching. Yeah, Joe Judge is part of that. If you're trying to get me to say that, that's that's the. It's completely. No, I mean, accurate. I, I, they. It seems like you're just. You're taking the giant season. You said it's all because Jason they Garrett's play fault. well, and then like a goddamn grandma, foot right off the gas, foot right off the <laughs> gas. If you look at the game when they're playing aggressively, when they're when they're dropping back and they're spreading out the receivers, and Danny Dimes is slinging it around. I'll say this, Sean, you're a Danny Dimes hater. Yep, he ain't the problem. No one can say he's the fucking problem. The totem, no, nope, nope. no fucking turnovers. <laughs> it's working. No, t- but also no touchdowns, which I feel like you need. But again, what happens? They get into the red zone, and the play calling turns to shit. So again, when they're leaning into it, they're playing aggressive. Which maybe if they start, they they lose enough games, or maybe Joe Judge knows he needs to lose enough games to get Gettleman and Garrett out of there. Mara, Mara had want- to see it with his own eyes. Sometimes rich, dumb motherfuckers <laughs> need to see shit with their own eyes. But to be clear, you want Joe Judge to continue coaching the Giants, right? Yeah. Okay. I mean, same. I want him. I think he's doing a great job. <laughs> I, 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 whatever. I don't understand the conservative, the, the conservative play call. I just don't get it. I mean, at this point, what's the point? You, you, but why does Joe Judge like him? Like, if I'm Joe Judge, I'm going. This guy's destroying my only opportunity I don't think to he be had a, a choi- head coach. I think whatever weird. I think John Merritt put got too involved, and I think he placed Jason Garrett there. And I think this was all. That's why he's pissed off when when a when a guy who makes decision makes a bad decision. He, he who's he gonna get? Who's he gonna fire himself? No. But I mean, you saw the reports. He he knocked over a trash can or two allegedly. <laughs> He's pissed off. Someone's getting fired. I'll bet you right now someone's fired next week. Okay. But yeah, I mean the the Giants are it, it it's 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 just classic. If you're playing to not lose, you're going to lose. Yep. Period. They certainly are going to lose, and uh, yeah, I mean, really, not much to take away from Atlanta. They still looked horrible. Giants just didn't want to. Be involved in the game, and uh, Matt Quint- Ryan's done. By the way, <laughs> I know his arm was cooked, but he drove him down and uh, got same the- thing. Defense was aggressive. Yeah, defense wasn't aggressive. Game over. That's football. <laughs> You're so soulless, Ryan. What am I gonna do? 
I don't know. I, I, I realize I'm going to have to put some shit on my shoulder and start <laughs> carrying some weight for this team. Since you're, can we get since one? you're throwing out bad juju picks for the giants to lose. Can we get, can we get all rise? All rise. <laughs> okay. All Detroit, rise. The Lions 17 Ravens 19. We were both on the Lions catching the big number. Oh man. I pray for Detroit and these Detroit sports fans. Justin Tucker sets an NFL record 66 yard field goal to win the game. If you didn't watch the kick, it was crazy. It hit the bottom of the crossbar, popped up, and then like barely went over. And uh, you know, they go back and they look at it, or you know, Lions fans are 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 pointing out that there was like a basically a missed delay, a game call that should have been on the Ravens. I mean, classic these- Harbaugh, horseshoe <laughs> right up his ass. These, I mean, I I feel for the Lions because they've been they've been frisky in a lot of these games. They were frisky this entire game. We nailed it as far as like Baltimore not being able to get up for this game. They were missing a ton of guys on their starting defense. It was it was a great sleepwalking opportunity for the Lions to steal the outright win. They go down, they get the uh, you know they get the go ahead score and just oh my god, you you just feel for Lions fans. Did we miss? Did we miss on something very critical about Dan Campbell, football guy? He might like to bet. Mm. He might know what a spread is. He might know exactly what he's being disrespected by every week. <laughs> I mean, this is classic Detroit. You lose in record-breaking fashion. That sounds like something Detroit would do. Yep. Yeah, that was a that was a crazy uh, crazy field goal. Meanwhile, Matty Stafford out dueling Tom Brady. Yeah, he looked good. Uh, Bills forty three, skins twenty one. Got cute here with the skins. I mean, hmm, I, Buffalo's back and better than ever. Didn't uh, I mean Josh Allen had a really good game. Manny Sanders uh, went off for the Bills. H- Heineke looked okay, but really, I mean, the Bills defense played well. And I, I think the big takeaway for me is. And we've been seeing this. We kind of saw it on the Thursday night game against the Giants. But this this Giants defense or this Washington defense, which was supposedly like a best unit in the NFC East, best unit in the NFC, maybe gonna carry this team. Th- this defense is just not good. It, it's almost like when a player goes down and you get that short term bump. Uh, this seemed like the game where the, the the defense didn't even try to show up. No. Um, what what's the miss here? Just Buffalo get right game. The NFC East is complete well, trash and, again. And just and just Washington, even with the long rest, just was you know, uh, not gonna, not gonna. You know, I mean, we I was high on Buffalo. Uh, the guy in the Twitch chat is like really fired up that we picked against Buffalo. I, you're right. I mean, again, I was high on Buffalo. I picked them to win the Super Bowl, but <laughs> I I when we're actually picking these games, it seemed like a spot. It was less about Buffalo, uh, you know. I, it wasn't a knock on Buffalo. I just thought Washington was competent enough to keep this a one-score game, and they just clearly aren't. And and Buffalo, the offense is firing on all cylinders, and really saw something out of that defense that I hadn't seen even in uh, the Miami game. So that I mean, uh, the Bills looked like you could make an argument they're the best team in the NFL right now. Yeah, and more macro. The uh, three of the four seven and a half eight point spreads. Came in for the the chalk, so yeah. Uh, I mean, there is that too. Like, we do have to address the elephant in the room. Like, I think this spread more than most was probably speaking to us. But well, yeah, and and again in the pregame show, win bet. I mean, the the Bills minus seven was like one of the most bet uh, spreads of the NFL season. So maybe just don't don't overthink it, Ryan. Just whatever the public bets on the most, ride that as well. That'll just keep winning, <laughs> right? That's how you get rich. But yeah, and and uh, I, the. Point out in the chat that uh, Diggs even had a quiet game and they and they still uh, racked up a shit ton of yards. So Bills look like they're they're rolling pretty good right now. Saints twenty eight, New England thirteen. I had the Pats. You had the Saints. This to me was just uh, I thought it was going to be a tough spot. Saints with a rare three road games in a row, but I mean Jameis Winston that LASIK did something for him because I mean there's a throw where like he's. <laughs> He's being pulled down at like the ten yard line, going into the end zone. He just throws this ball up, and you know, Marquez Callaway catches it, touchdown. It, the old Jameis that would have been a pick six going the other way, but everything is breaking right 
for the Saints team, and and you kind of hit on it uh, on your grading of Mac Jones. He just looked really bad. Bad game by Mac Jones. Ah uh, man, it, it. I mean, I think we're just being reminded a that a rookie quarterbacks struggle, but also like the, if you think about it, like Jameis was a bona fide number one pick because he had the talent of a number one pick. We didn't know that he like who knew that he did all that with needing glasses. I mean, <laughs> that's the more impressive. He won a yeah. national championship. And he couldn't see the fucking receiver. <laughs> like, can we can we give the man a little yes. bit of credit? Love that first round. I mean, yeah, I think I think this is going to be the roller coaster of Jameis. Though you're gonna you're gonna get him in spots where I think Sean Payton out schemed. Um, I think I think Sean Payton beat Bill Belichick today. Yep. I think the defense for the Saints uh, were ready. I think the offense was ready for what Belichick was going to obviously do. And they 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 no, they got they, they got a zagged. coach too. And and I think you know the the Saints kind of also having all the coaches and everything missed last week. I, I think this kind of you know it, it's a nice rally spot to go up there. We we mentioned it. Sean, who do, Payton, they, who do they have next week for Sean Payton? It's important to beat Bill, Bill Belichick. Who who the Saints? Yeah, the Giants. Oh, at home. Well, we'll see if the roof is still on fire. I mean, Ryan. Uh, ooh. That's well, D Bettis in the, is talking shit in the chat, saying the Giants are auto fade for the next six games. Yeah, and and, le, and their next six games, the Giants have New Orleans, Dallas, Rams, Carolina, Kansas City, Las Vegas, and Tampa Bay. I don't think they're favored in any of those games. You, <laughs> Chargers you add something to that productive. <laughs> Chargers thirty, Chiefs twenty four. I had the Chiefs. I thought, I thought. My boy Patrick Mahomes coming off a loss would be good against the spread. He's not. I mean, real. This was a. I, I'm not going to say weird game, but the Chargers. It's a rare game where the Chargers the ball bounced the right way for the Chargers. Whether it was a, <laughs> a tip interception, they got multiple fumbles. It was weird because Mahomes looked bad. Mahomes looked really rough, and he threw a t- uh, interception late in crunch time. And not to take anything away from the Chargers, although Chargers kind of finished the game weird, where they probably could have just kneeled it out and then kicked the field goal instead. It, well, and you would make fun of them, but their kicker did miss yeah. an extra point earlier they in the. Are, they are the Chargers. So uh, again, they give the ball back to Mahomes, and it just can't get it done. Uh, man, it is uh, Char- Kansas City below 500 for the first time since 2015. Last place. That's crazy. They're in last place, and Chargers should be three and zero. Oh, man, I mean they they really blew that uh, game against the Cowboys. Look at ahead. I mean it was a, it clearly look ahead spot, uh, which well, I'm but sure also like the Chargers are still a weird team at home. I, I think, I think AKA not at home. <laughs> yeah, I think playing the playing the Cowboys at home, where seventy percent of the fans are rooting for the other team, I think that fucks with your head. Yeah, I mean. It's probably helpful for the handicap because people are enough people still don't get that. that yeah, no one actually likes the Chargers in LA, but this is a good team, and more importantly, the AFC West. It's blowing my mind right now. It is, uh, yeah, it is a certainly a very weird division. Oh man, Kansas City Chiefs—they couldn't hang on to the ball this game, but uh, you know, you know what they should do—that they should try and hang on to their hair. They, uh, if you want to hang on to your hair, you got to go to keeps.com slash S G P receive a first month of treatment free. Again, do not fumble away your follicles. They hook you up uh, low cost treatments, only 10 bucks per month, discreet packaging, proven results. They have more five-star reviews than any of the competitors and you know, prevention is key. Get to it before you lose too many and uh, treatment could take four to six months. So Get in on it now. Keeps.com slash SGP uh, to get your first month free. Keeps.com slash SGP. Grimmer, we're also brought to you by Mint Mobile. That's right. Tired of having, uh, again, I, I'd rather I'd rather give my money to the bookie. I mean, I don't want to give my money to the bookie, but I like having extra money to spend on sports gambling. And by switching your plan to Mint Mobile, you can do that. Mint Mobile Premium Wireless for only fifteen dollars a month. I know it sounds too good to be true. They kind of cut out the middleman, aka the retail store. You don't need a retail store. They can just mail you whatever you need. You can keep your same phone, keep your same phone number. And again, if you're not one hundred percent satisfied, Mint Mobile has you covered. Seven day money back guaranteed. 
premium wireless for just 15 bucks a month. Mintmobile.com slash sports SGP. Mintmobile.com slash sports SGP. Cut your wireless bill to 15 bucks a month. This Dolphins game, Ryan. Wow, what a ride. What a freaking ride. Cutching. Cutching. I, I mean, mean, come on, let's go. Lock, baby. Miami, 28. All right, it is 31. I mean, both teams had multiple opportunities to win this game. Uh, Miami, I'll say this though. I said it when we picked the game. Both had the Dolphins. I thought they'd win outright. I'll stand by my prediction. And he didn't look amazing, but he looked better than Tua, okay? Jacoby Brissett looked better that, than Tua. That head first dive. I mean, he just wants to win the game. And uh, just to bring everyone up to speed, the close your eyes special. Mm. Teams underperforming by 21 points or more, getting points the next week. Two and uh, it's two and zero this week, Sean. Nice with the Saints and the Dolphins, and it's now three and one on the season. So good, good start for the uh, close your eyes special. Uh, I don't know what the takeaway is with Las Vegas. They're just a good team. They've got their shit going on we mentally. Get our shit going mentally. I mean, this is the best. I've seen Derek Carr look. I, I think even in that year where they were really good, I, I still think he looks better now. Like there, there seems to be a little moxie with uh, Derek Carr and that and that pass rush. Crosby is legit, and this Miami team, the defense played really hard, got some turnovers. Uh, it, it was a it was a good game, nice back and forth affair. I'm still kind of high on Miami. I think they'll be sneakily okay with Brissett. We'll see what the market. Uh, has the map, but uh, yeah, something to keep it on. I mean, the Raiders seem like they're a team that's confident and knows how to win football games. Are we are we crazy to look at their future price hmm. for the Super Bowl? Who? John Gruden. Oh God. We got to get our shit going mentally. Yeah, I mean, well, look it up. But I'm not I'm not betting on the Raiders to win the Super Bowl. I mean, maybe they win a playoff game, which is much farther than I thought they'd uh, ever get. What do you think their odds are right now? I would say fifteen to one to win the Super Bowl. Yeah. What do we got it at? I don't see him. Oh, here we go. Forty-five to one. Wow. Yeah, I don't know where I was getting fifteen to one. And that was probably a little low. Uh, but yeah, no, I, I think, uh, I, and they know how to beat the Chiefs. Like that's the other part of this. They can win this division this year. I'll say that. Well, and you mentioned the Chiefs. We didn't get to it uh during the Chiefs recap, but Andy Reid was feeling ill after the game, took him to the hospital. Sounds like he's gonna be okay. But yeah, I mean, big guy like him, kind of scary, but uh by all accounts he's doing all right. So hopefully he uh yeah, hopefully he's uh, he's all right there. I'm sure he'll be fine. Yeah. Ra- Raiders are uh you can still get th- you can still get the Raiders. What about them to win the AFC West? You can still get them to win. It's plus five fifty still to win the AFC West. Yeah, that's really funny. They're, I mean, they're three and zero. Oh. Chiefs <laughs> minus one ten. Broncos plus two seventy five. Chiefs, Chiefs are one and two with the division loss at home. Chargers plus three fifty and Raiders plus three. What are the Broncos? Plus two seventy five. <laughs> Broncos are undefeated. I mean, I don't know why there's such a difference between the Broncos and the Raiders. I mean, the Raiders, I mean, they've done it a bit against better competition than the Broncos for sure. Broncos 26, Jets 0. I had the Broncos again. Should have should have, you know, no need to get cute. Should have put this in the old lock. Denver uh just a solid team. I'm not amazing, but very solid and and the Jets just are dog shit. I I don't know what else to say. Teddy Bridgewater looking sharp. Their defense came to play, but you know, I mean, I, this is really just more about the Jets. Yeah, I mean, they're they're uh, like deep at the bot. You know how you have like some, you probably have some trash at the bottom of your mm. like city issued trash can. That, yeah, like it's you. You're not getting in there. It's impossible. Like, what are you gonna hose it you're, out? You're not hosing it out, then dumping it over, and so you still have to like lay <laughs> in there because it's taller than your arms. Yeah, uh, that's where the Jets are. They're they're pasted onto the bottom of the fucking auto fade trash bin. You know, someone had a uh, <laughs> Robert Sala runs the state the stairs of the stadium after <laughs> after each game. I learned this today. Um, yeah, New York coaches focus on football. Ryan, what are the uh, who who do you think runs more, Joe Judge or Robert Sala? I mean, Robert Sala looks like he's in much better shape than yeah. Joe Judge. Joe Judge has like the Northeast eggplant. 
shape, you know, <laughs> like just that, like, you, you know, the fit like that, that kind of swollen Italian face <laughs> where the body just keeps getting wider until a point, And then it kind of bellows down to some like awkward looking legs that you're not sure if it's fat or muscle uh, coming down into a shoe that hopefully uh, can contain the billowing uh, muffin top. <laughs> that is the ankle. It's a very long description. Tampa Bay 24 Rams 34 Deshaun Jackson sighting Maddie Stafford. Give it to him looking, uh, looking real sharp. And uh, Sean McVay, I don't know what kind of pre-workout he was on, but the guy was <laughs> fired up. Just His- ah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. Looks like Tom Cruise about to jump on a couch. He was just like, <laughs> pray for his wife tonight. Pray for, her. I don't think he's married. He's got a girlfriend. Don't you remember? They have a dog. He, he shows the dog tricks. He drinks red wine. Pray for the dog tonight. He was very <laughs> excited. You have to I, know when to come. I mean, and, and you know, Tampa Bay, they're on the road, but the Tampa Bay secondary, when we've seen flashes of it being an issue, I mean, Atlanta, probably their best offensive game against Tampa Bay. Dallas was able to move the ball pretty easily against them. They can only cover up so much uh, uh, as far as like their, their issues and, and kind of a similar, you know, state of affairs with the 49ers where um, you know, the, the, the front seven, which is really good can only cover up so much for the secondary. So I think that's a real issue with the bucks. And I think it's a real issue with the 49ers as well. I mean, just back to McVay for one second. I clearly he now he gets to be. Remember the time I beat Tom Brady? Uh, it was very. <laughs> remember the time that. I beat Tom Brady? Well, they probably eat the same number of almonds. They probably have like the same competing green drink uh, line. I mean, you've seen, you've seen. Uh, I knew that extra avocado was do it. You see, Let's go. You, you saw Sean McVay in in those commercials. He's very excited about soup and circling soup and pointing out it has protein in the soup. I mean, Man, Sean McVay is, um, you know, he, he, he's just like your typical LA guy. As probably for, shaves his chest. As a former <laughs> IT guy, probably shaves his eyebrows. Well, he gets some wax, you know, whatever. He's he's like he's like if Ryan Seacrest became an NFL coach. That's what I think of Sean McVay. Yeah, I just do you know. with you what you will with that uh, statement. Vikings thirty, Seattle seventeen. Ryan, what? I mean, this guy looked limited as shit. We w- what happened to Russell Wilson? And a lot of it was probably on him. The yeah, I mean, I guess Kirk Cousins helped the defense construct a plexiglass box <laughs> around Russell Wilson. Uh I don't know, man. I don't know what to think. This Minnesota defense has not looked incredibly good. No. This Minnesota defense, I don't think anyone thinks is a defense that's going to shut down a lot of teams passing game. So I, I I think at this point we have to start considering the fact that Pete Carroll is spending more of his time investigating uh, the conspiracies of the world than trying to coach football. Mm. He's clearly at the end of the road. Well, now do we know? I mean, do we have multiple angles of this game? Do we know that this actually happened? Mm. I mean, is there a chance that the Justin Jefferson, Kirk Cousins are all crisis actors, and this game actually didn't happen? We'll have. We should ask Pete Carroll about that. I, I think Pete Carroll has some serious soul searching to do. Uh, this team. So does Russell Wilson. I mean, the fact that you're you're gonna tell me that Russell Wilson is gonna succumb to the look ahead. I, I we we undersold it on the pick show, but the look ahead was strong, and clearly, clearly there are demons between them and the Rams, and they were thinking about it, and they like Kirk Cousins in kind of prime time beat him. Late afternoon, not quite kind, prime time. Kind of prime time. That's a half. I'll give him a half win in prime time for that. Packers 30, 49ers 28. Aaron Rodgers fired up. Devontae Adams took a took a brutal blow, came back. Yeah. And I, I mean, the the Packers, you know, almost blew this game. I mean, they they should have put them they should have put the 49ers away. Again, I'm a guy who busts Jimmy G's chops all the time, but he took that team down the field, got them that game go ahead score. And really this game was more on the defense, like Aaron Rodgers, and that was kind of the handicap we were both on, and yeah. that the secondary is just too banged up. There's too many holes on the defense. And as good as the front seven is, and that they can kind of slow things down on the run, um, you know, they have some real liabilities. And 
the, not that the Packers defense is that great either. Uh, it'll be, it'll be interesting once they kind of get, do we know when, uh, when uh, I, you know, the Packers need to get something going on the offensive line as well, but you know, 30 points on the road, getting a nice win over San Francisco. Good stop. Yeah, this is a, a good, good, they got good out of time with the win uh, on the money line. Ka-ching, ka-ching, ka-ching. Uh, we, and, and sorry, uh, Seattle was looking ahead to San Francisco, not, not, uh, not the Rams. Uh, look, this is, I think we should have to maybe focus on the Aaron Rodgers narrative here, because just like Nicholas cage in yeah. many of his movies, he starts out looking like a bag of dicks, but then he crescendos into being some form of action star mm. that slays uh, whatever problem or, or villain there is to slay. Maybe sh- a couple extra bodies along the way could be his comments in the media. So I think that first game was needed. I don't know if that was a, uh, I don't know what that was, but clearly we, two things we need to look into one, what happened in Jacksonville? Mm. Does Aaron Rodgers have a relationship down there? Something <laughs> like that. And two, uh, it, yeah, can't, can't fade Aaron Rodgers for a little while. I think this team is going to be able to score enough points to at least for the, the upcoming schedule to out outpace their competitors. Yeah, and, and certainly some issues on the defense as well. All right, picks wise, it's the number one app for sports betting's picks, helmed by a team of trend watching, data devouring sports fanatics, giving you the who, how, and why behind every prediction for every game, every day, and every sport. Loaded with the best bets, props, and parlays, you can find in depth analysis on every game, all for free. Found your pick, search the latest sportsbook promotions to sign up an account, compare the odds, and get your bet placed. Download the free Pixwise app now to make your next bet better. Pixwise backs responsible gambling. Gambling problem? Call one eight hundred Gambler. Oddscrowd.com. Check them out for all the fantasy betting contests. We'll have to see where I'm at in the uh, college contest. I've been making a run there. We got a weekly one hundred dollar NFL uh, pick 'em going. So again, if you have the SGPN app, uh. Head over to oddscrowd.com, enter your picks every week, and a chance to win a hundred free bucks. Oddscrowd.com, Kramer time for the Monday night prop bets. Of course, getting these numbers off prizepicks.com. You can take three entries, uh, put them in there, 20 bucks wins you 100. If you go mm. three for three, I got my three in front of me. And again, prizepicks.com, promo code SGP. Hundred percent deposit bonus up to one hundred dollars. Kramer, what do you got? Well, I think you always have to start with the Zeke under a half touchdowns. Kitching. Uh, yeah, I mean, I, I like what I, if if I'm betting on a, a defensive front in the division right now, it's probably the Eagles, Ooh. and I would imagine they would be keyed on uh, Zeke and just in general, Zeke just not the guy who looks like the alpha in that backfield. If anything, he's the one B. Uh, to Pollard's a, uh, so yeah, under half a touchdown. Yep, I'm with you on that right. one. Pollard Ze- over two receptions. Okay, well, I was gonna give out oh. a stat. Zeke, uh, eight games against the Eagles, only three of them he, he's got a oh. touchdown. So you got, I mean, you got history there as well. And and I'm confident we're gonna we're gonna do pretty well with the run. Yeah, I think it's gonna it's a combination of he's I think he's losing time on the field. So it's, yeah. it's that combined with the fact that I, I think he's going to, you know, they'll key on him when he's there. So, but yeah, Pollard over two receptions uh, this, this season, he's gone over that mark both games. And I don't see any reason why it would change against the Eagles. I think one of the ways the Cowboys will try to attack the Eagles will be with the running backs in the passing game. And I think quite frankly, Pollard looks, the eye test tells me that Pollard's the guy I want on the field catching those passes. So over two receptions, this one's really easy. And, and if uh, wherever you can get down so on easy. these, uh, I mean, prize picks being first and foremost, but I, I don't know if other shops are pricing this the same, but if they are, it's a massive opportunity. Dallas Goddard over three catches last nine games. He's gone eight and one of three catches or more. I think only one of those was a three catch game. He had only two catches uh, last last game. And the, the big talking points were like, we got to get Dallas Goddard the ball more before that he had eight games in a row where he had three catches or more. So 
I, I'm all in on Dallas Goddard over three catches. That's just way too easy. So the 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 most shops have uh, this around uh, between like three juiced uh, to the over or three and a half juiced to the under. So you can like this is available. This is why. Yeah, available. I mean this is uh, definitely get down to this one. Uh, Ryan, I'm I'm watching a hilarious battle go back between uh, Bruin Dude and D Bettis in the YouTube chat. <laughs> Appreciate them. D. Bettis is an Eagles fan. Go Birds, uh, oh. D. Bettis. Uh, they're, they're having a heated debate over who's shittier, Zach Wilson or uh, Daniel Jones. Oh. <laughs> it's a pretty fun debate. That's I've been mean, keep, keeping my eye we're, on. We're, we have a podcast to stick to. So please. No, I mean, uh, please. Yeah, we, we involve the listeners. We appreciate interaction. Nope, we need but if focus. guys want to start their own argument about who's <laughs> worse, Zach Wilson or Daniel Jones, I wouldn't make. On a neutral field, which um, Jet Life Stadium is the ultimate neutral field, no home advantage for either team. I I would favor. In what area of football has Zach Wilson done anything better than Daniel? Well, you said, but you race, said, no. You sound Armstrong, like D. Bettis. No. <laughs> I would make. I would favor the Giants by two and a half points against the Jets. What? Giants would be favored by two and a half. Is that what you said? Uh, that's the line I would say. Yeah, because I think Jets get up for that game. Kramer, third third prop. You're hilarious. My third prop. I mean, what would you set the line at? Eight and a half. Three. <laughs> <laughs> the, All right. Uh, we let's go. Jalen Hurts over fifty four and a half rushing yards. Uh, it's, they're not. This isn't right. Well, so, and again, I, don't I mean, regardless of game script, whether they're behind and he's playing catch up or they're moving the ball. I mean, like it, in both games, it, in both the 49ers and Atlanta, like he's looking to run. So I, I, I think they draw up specific runs for him and you know, they just lost their linebacker. So any of these props that you can use to take advantage of them, not having a linebacker, I, I think is huge. This one, I I've been all over the, the Quez Watkins market has been just not priced correctly over 27 and a half receiving yards. I mean, he had that one bomb last time. All he needs is one deep shot. 27 and a half. He is their deep threat. I, I think there's going to be some opportunities against the Cowboys. 27 and a half is way too low. Yeah. And, and honestly, like it, I think one of the ways I'm going to play the props tomorrow is a game that involves the Eagles running for a lot of yards, like maybe to the tune of like miles Sanders could have a massive game and Jalen hurts have a massive game on the ground. It seems like a, a logical uh, uh, game plan to deploy, and simple systems over there would would probably be aware of that. So, you know, stay tuned for my my uh, world famous uh, additional props that I'll be giving. Out. We still have more here. But, yeah, but boy, I have this. This game is is very prop rich. So that's the uh, that's the prize picks entry again. Promo code SGP. What about your uh, DJ only prop bet, Kramer? What do you got? You want hashtag Dejans only. I got Miles Sanders. What do you got for three touchdowns? Forty-five to one. Kenneth Gainwell had two touchdowns at uh, I think it's seventeen fifty. I was considering that, uh, but I, 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 reading between the lines, perhaps this could be a nice Miles Sanders game. I I agree. Uh, my DJ only prop bet. I'm going back to the Quez Watkins. Well, Quez Watkins to have, and again, these are like the crazy long shot ones that are fun. 120 plus receiving yards uh, and a touchdown. Eagles win 63 to uh. one. Right? I mean, he had 117 receiving yards last game, so the yardage yeah. is there. It's just kind of getting the other two things there. What if I told you you could do Devonte Smith? Hundred yards, two touchdowns, twenty to one. Hmm. I like the sixty-three to one. I you mean, like, I I don't like mind the I don't mind the Devonta Smith. I think the two touchdowns is where you trip. I mean, Quez okay. Watkins, like just watch that 49ers game. If he doesn't get tackled going in, uh, they he gets that touchdown. He's uh, hits the yardage, and they probably end up winning that yeah. game. So like he's he was one play away from getting to the last game. Okay, I, I just know he's their deep guy, and that's why it's fun. What do we got for first touchdown? Throw out some uh, first oh, touchdown prices. You know, 
I'm not like you. I'm not going to be playing any Cowboys first touchdown. Really? Yeah. You're just going, just going all in on the on the Eagles, huh? Yep. I like that dedication. You know, yeah, the, it worked uh, for the Sam Darnold one. It did. It did. No you, quarter well, units over here, Ryan. You know, my system is locked, locked in. All right, uh, for the Cowboys, we're going to go Tony Pollard at eleven to one. Dak Prescott. Oh, but which, by the way, Rain Dakota Prescott uh, on Pro Football Reference, very objective website. They have in parentheses after his name, which I believe is a nickname, the Fortress. Mm. So we maybe we start calling him the Fortress. Uh, so Dak it's Pres- kind of a cool nickname. I Dak don't think Dak Prescott sixteen to one, uh, and then on the other side of the ball, I don't quite get this one. Miles Sanders and Jalen Hurts are both ten to one. What? Yeah. What? Yeah. Okay. Yeah, that's fucking crazy. <laughs> Sean's going to be playing the entire Eagles starting lineup. Uh, well, what, what is, what is Devontis? Uh, what is, what is Quez Watkins? Cause I keep having fun with Quez Watkins. All right. yeah, that's a good clip. Uh, Quez Watkins is not even listed. I don't see him listed hmm. on this. He would be part of the field. So I don't even see field listed. So yeah, you couldn't even wager on Quez Watkins. Really? Yeah. What is the field? I don't see a field. So he's just, you just can't bet on, <laughs> but at, as I looked at Eagles defense, 40 to one, is that interesting? Boston Scott, 65 to one, Greg Ward's on here. JJ what is he? Arcega white sides on it. Greg Ward, 65 to one. Yeah. He's not getting any snaps. I, you know what? I'm just going to do the miles Sanders, Jalen hurts, both 10 to one. Let's go book oh. it. Yeah, that's good. Last, okay. last time you copied me, we've won. So let's yeah. do that again. Shout out to the money tree. Thanks for uh, freshening up the studio. Get some fresh air in here. Some money air. We got to get our shit going mental. I do notice the air quality in here seems to be. Yes. It is uh it is top notch. Make sure you drop us a uh, rating review. Trying to give away some merch, uh SGP mini helmet and uh t-shirt. And again, I announce the winners every Monday on Twitter at Gambling Podcast. If you don't have Twitter, get in Slack. There's no other way. And I post the winners every week. So if you put in a review, go check Cause maybe you won. I, I feel like there's no way for me to email these no. usernames. And I, you know, so again, if you leave a rating or review on Apple podcast, that's awesome. Helps us climb the charts, but also uh, check in on, on at gambling podcast for merch Monday or in Slack. I post it there as well. So you don't miss your uh, free shot at some sweet, sweet gear for the sports gambling podcast. I'm Sean stacking the money green and he is Ryan. All right. <laughs> Kramer. Let it.